I'm Joe Lample. When I created Growing a Greener World, I had one goal, to tell stories of everyday people, innovators, entrepreneurs, forward-thinking leaders, who are all, in ways both big and small, dedicated to organic gardening and farming, lightening our footprint, conserving vital resources, protecting natural habitats, making a tangible difference for us all. They're real, they're passionate, they're all around us. They're the game changers who are literally growing a greener world and inspiring the rest of us to do the same. Growing a greener world, it's more than a movement, it's our mission. In the rolling hills of Sonoma Valley, California, famous for award-winning wines and great gardens, lies a small business inspired by one man's passion for gardening and the incredible results he discovered by using worms to improve his soil. International airline pilot by day and avid worm farmer when he's not in the captain's seat, Jack Chambers is founder and owner of Sonoma Valley Worm Farm. His fascination for the power of worms led Jack and his family down a new path that is providing great rewards. Prior to purchasing the farm, he had no prior experience in the worm business. But in Jack's words, that turned out to be a good thing. With a fresh perspective and new eyes, Jack's vision and passion for his products has expanded greatly since then. So Jack, how does a guy that spends his life in the glamorous role as a pilot traveling the world end up spending so much time with the nondescript worm? Well, a friend of mine told me I should come out here and buy some worms for my garden. Uh -huh. And I came out and I bought a five gallon bucket of worms and I put it in my compost bin. And I went away on a five day trip and when I got back I couldn't believe what the worms had done to that bin. I mean they'd gone through it and it just was beautiful. And so I came out and bought another five gallon bucket yeah. and uh, I was hooked. Uh -huh. I was just hooked. So what were some of the things that you noticed about your garden at that point? Well, I came out and started hanging out in Earl's garden here, and I noticed that all of his flower stems were, were strong, all of the uh, things that he grew, like these potatoes, these potatoes were planted in these beds 30 years ago. Wow. Um, and they've been here ever since with no disease. They're the best tasting potatoes that you've ever tasted. Uh. And uh, I know just by watching it that there's disease suppression. Yeah. And yeah. so it was originally starting with the worms, but then it turned into um, how good the, the food tasted, mm. and then the disease uh, resistance that was there. Yeah. And then I started seeing that the worms were the workers that could produce the worm castings or vermicompost, and that's, that was the deal. We work with a soil microbiologist and she was talking about uh, pseudomonads and pseudomonads being related to taste. Yeah, oh well, yeah. And so uh, our vermicompost is very, very high in pseudomonads and I think there's a correlation there between taste because everything that we grow in here has superior taste. The peppers, the uh, garlic, the shallots, and then we have a vineyard that uh, we grow and you can taste you can taste it in the wine. Wow. Kind of what we were talking about earlier, the whole idea here now for me is about growing better food, growing food that's healthy, mm -hmm. growing food that tastes good. It's the way of the future. I think that worm castings are going to revolutionize agriculture and you know there's several different things that we'll talk about here, but I think it's really it's the wave of the future. So this is your home now and this is your garden, right? And it really is apparent that the worm castings and the worm compost are making a big difference. But you're the kind of guy that does everything in a big way. You fly a big jet and then you, uh, you don't just settle on the worm castings. You take it to a whole nother level, right? Right. So uh, you've got quite a system that I'm dying to see. So as we make our way through the garden, can we make a turn into your worm sure. factory? Sure. And I'll show you how it's done. Okay. So I take it this is where it all begins, and I've always said if it looks like manure, smells like manure, it's probably manure, and you have a lot of it. We do. Every Monday we go out to the dairy in Big Red, 
and we pick up a load of manure at Strauss Dairy and we bring it back here and we pre-compost it. And we do that for three reasons. We want to get rid of the pathogens, mm -hmm. specifically E. coli. We want to make sure that we get rid of weed seeds. People don't want weed seeds in their compost. And then we need to take some of the heat energy out so that when we feed it to the worms, it won't heat up the worm bins. Sure. After that, we'll leave it in here for about a week and then we transfer it to one of the outside bins where we'll reheat everything, make sure everything is mixed, mm -hmm. do that for about another week, and then we go ahead and feed it to the worms. So how often do you replace this? Because this is quite a bit of uh, compost manure. It is. Uh, every week we go to the dairy, so it's just a rotating system, and we've got about eight million worms there that need to be fed, so this is what it takes. That's a lot of mouths to feed. It's a lot of mouths to feed. I guess we should go uh, get to work with that. Yes. Okay. So this is the bin where we not only make the vermicompost, but we also harvest the worms out of these bins. Uh -huh. We put them in a five gallon bucket and we take them over and put them through a trommel screen where we clean the dirt away from the worms. We box them up in a wax lined box with uh, peat moss inside and we'll ship them all over the Bay Area so that people can have their own worm bin. It's kind of like coming full circle. <laughs> you know, I started that way and now we can do it for people in the Bay Area. Little did you know that you were going to be going full circle with that. I, I never thought that would happen. <laughs> and ironically, to another full circle story is that my wife, who was not going to be involved with this at all, <laughs> is now the person who does the phone orders and boxes everything up and the shipping labels and sends out the worms and talks to the public. <laughs> Jack Chambers and his family aren't the only ones excited about worms and all the good they do for the garden. Yet little was even known about the inner workings of worms until Charles Darwin devoted years of his life and his last book to their physiology and behavior. But you do have to wonder, how could something so nondescript, I mean look at this guy, there's no spine, there's no teeth, there's no eyes, there's not even any lungs, be such a powerful force in the garden to transform ordinary soil into something so extraordinary. Well, for starters, earthworms consume a massive amount of organic matter in the soil. It's estimated that each year about 15 tons of dry soil per acre make their way through earthworms. And as it passes past the gut into the back end known as the castings, well, what comes out is far richer nutrients than what goes in the front side. And compared to ordinary garden soil like this, worm castings have five times more nitrogen, seven times more phosphate, and 10 times more potash plus three times more usable magnesium and one and a half times more calcium. The calcium is important because it helps the plants take up nitrogen, which is responsible for lush green growth, plus a lot of other important functions. Although there are numerous calcium supplements like dolomitic limestone and bone meal and gypsum, many store-bought nutrients can quickly leach away in water, break down quickly, or exist in a form that plants can't readily take up. But in worm castings, the calcium, as well as all the other nutrients, are longer lasting and available in a state that's easier for plants to absorb. Want more? As Jack has clearly observed, worm castings are also known to suppress various plant diseases in soil. Those same castings also increase soil aggregation and water holding capacity, and yet as the worms move through the soil, they create burrows, which do great things to aerate soil and improve drainage, especially in clay and compacted soil. You know, at home, raising your own worms, making vermicompost, or even harvesting the castings is a lot of fun. And if you're going to do this, get red wigglers because they're readily accessible. I got these at the bait shop, and they're not very expensive. They're also not very demanding. All you do is add some food scraps or store them in a manure pile like Jack does. Or, for most homeowners who have a compost pile, put them right there. Incidentally, in spite of the lack of foes, humans are still the earthworm's biggest threat. Rototilling destroys worm burrows and can cut and kill worms that never regenerate. Chemical fertilizers high in salts can be harmful to them as well as some pesticides. 
The soil is a living ecosystem, supporting a multitude of organisms, from earthworms to microbes. It functions best with minimal disturbance on our part. You know you're doing your part to create a worm-friendly environment if there's a noticeable population of worms in your soil. A lot of worms means there's plenty of organic matter for the worms to eat, along with the absence of synthetic fertilizers that are high in salt. Now, if you're not into raising your own worms for the castings, don't worry because you can usually find them at a retail garden center and always online. And the good news is, a little bit goes a long way. So this is the compost that we started out with as manure. We've mm -hmm. composted it. Now we're going to feed the worms. So we'll bring it over. We'll lay it out. We've got a million worms in each bin. <laughs> so we'll feed them twice a week. And we've got all these mouths to feed. <laughs> so you can see that we are feeding them well. There's also other <laughs> things in here. There's springtails, all kinds of uh, other life. All it's doing a, good things for the soil. That's right huge microbial populations now too. So they will munch on this. What we feed today or what we fed yesterday will come out the bottom of the bin in 60 days. So it's a 60 day process once we feed it to the worms. So as you keep adding new material, the older material is consumed and it's processed and it just works its way down. Right. And, and that's what's harvested. That's one of the things that you're doing is getting the vermicompost out of the bin exactly. and selling it. Right. So how do you do that? There's a blade that sits on uh, one end of the bin and then we pull it through with a pulley system mm -hmm. and we pull it both ways. It cuts off about an inch of material each way. Kind of like slicing off a cake? It, exactly. Of a cake. The bottom of a cake. Uh -huh. And uh, we'll let that sit and air dry for a day and then we'll scoop it up and then sift it and make it ready to use as vermicompost or as the vermicompost tea. This is the uh, material that we just got from under the bin. We screened it, and now it's ready to go out to the home gardener or people in the vineyard. Yeah, you do a lot of work with the vineyards. What, uh, what sort of applications are they using this for? They're using it when they plant. They'll put a cup in every hole, and they find that the vines get off to a really great start. Uh -huh. They lose fewer vines in the planting process, and uh, I think it's gonna show that there's a taste preference for the for the grapes. And then in the home garden a lot of people are using this to supplement uh, their planting beds or even putting it right into the hole too. Right. I think that's a great way. Put a cup in a hole for your tomato plants or your peppers and the plants just jump out of the ground. You'll get more blooms, more tomatoes, more peppers. It's really great. And, and so as a home gardener how much would I pay for something like this? Uh, we sell a 20 pound bag for twenty dollars and there's 85 cups so for $20, you plant 85 plants, and it's just magic stuff. Yeah, a little bit goes a long way, and that is not a lot to invest in your garden. Right. We've been really excited about making vermicompost tea the last eight years. We use it for the roses, for rust, black spot, powdery mildew. It takes care of all that, wow. and the roses look great all year long. If you like the idea of using vermicompost tea yourself and you want to try that at home for not a lot of money, Patty's got a great solution for you and she's standing by to tell you about it. This is amazing that you can do this and not have those problems. Yeah, Roses are so stuff. susceptible yes, to that. Yes, they, they, they look great all year long like this. Jack does everything in a big way. He breeds lots of worms, makes lots of wine, and also brews up tons of worm tea by the vat. Now, for the home gardener, we don't need to make that much worm tea. So I'm going to show you a really easy kit and a really easy way to make your own home-brewed worm tea. Now in this kit, you've got everything you need to make about three batches of it. I've got some cloth here. We're going to use that for our worm castings. Also have some string that we're going to tie that up with. We've got a great bag of nutritious worm castings that we're going to use. We also have an aerator and this is going to help aerate the water and breed those awesome beneficial microbes that we're going to need to spray all over our plants. We've also got molasses. This is dried molasses and this is going to feed our microbes in the water while it's brewing. 
All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to just add water. This is a five gallon bucket and I've got some water right here. I'm just going to pour it in. The water you're going to want to use is basically water that has no chlorine in it. The best way to do that is to leave the water out, let it evaporate, or if you collect rainwater, that's perfect water to use for your worm tea. Got the water in the bucket. We're going to take one packet of the molasses and we're just going to pop that into the water and we're going to let that dissolve in the water. All right, now we've got our bag of organic worm castings, which is great. And we're going to only use about a third of this in our fabric here. Now the fabric is basically like our tea bag. And we're going to put the nutrient rich worm castings right in the middle. And we're going to set aside the rest for use later. Now I'm making my tea bag here. And I'm just taking this yarn. You can use you can use anything really to tie it up nice and tight. So our tea bag here kind of serves like a tea bag at home. We don't want any of the particles to get into the water, just like we don't want any of those tea leaves to get into our tea. We take it and we just pop it in to our water. The last thing we need to do is set up the aerator. You're gonna wanna let this aerator brew your tea for 24 hours and use immediately. If you don't use it immediately and you just let the water sit, those microbes that you need on your plants are just gonna die off, so use it immediately. This tea is gonna be a great insect repellent, fertilizer, and also fungicide. You can purchase this kit online for about $35 or make your own at home for less. No matter what's growing in your soil, from root crops to grapevines to homegrown vegetables, worm castings and vermicompost are a valuable addition, providing the primary nutrients as well as many of the necessary trace elements, micronutrients, and beneficial bacteria plants need to thrive. Even more, soil structure is improved along with better aeration and drought tolerance of plants. No wonder Jack and so many more are raving fans of what worms can do for the garden. Who would have known that worms have so many advantages to improving soil and the plants that grow in it? They made a believer out of Jack Chambers, and I've been a fan for years, too. If you have any questions about today's show, check us out on the web at growingagreenerworld.com. I'm Joe Lample. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you back here next time for more Growing a Greener World. Oh, I love these worms. Look at them. Oh, they're gorgeous. Well, so this is where it all starts, obviously, and I've always said if it looks like manure and smells like manure, it probably is manure. <laughs> okay, and take two. Still rolling. Still rolling. Ready? Okay. Looks like a tiger old <laughs> Three, two. So I assume this is where it all starts. Contemplating this, the life of the worm. <laughs>